it. Thank you so much for joining me in this awesome interview. Thanks for inviting me. But let's get to Totally Spies and tell me how you got involved in, in that show and, and, and your thoughts about it. Well, it was um, awesome. <laughs> I mean, I auditioned for it just like everything else. So, you know, I was lucky enough to get cast. What I loved about it, of course, I don't think I'd been in an all mainly female cast since My Little Pony, the original My Little Pony. So that was great. The concept of, um, you know, the girls working together, that was really fun. And then we'd have all these guest stars come on the show. That's how I first met Jess Harnell, because he played Jerry, and I, I'd never worked with Andrea or Jennifer before, so that was fun. And it was a, actually kind of a weird time in my life, and there was some things going on that I got to express my frustrations <laughs> by working on the show and fighting bad guys. So I needed that show at that time, I think. But it was great. It um, we I had so much fun working on the show, the funny plot and the guest stars but I didn't know what it looked like until it came out and I was amazed at the artwork and, and the you know the anime sort of crossover that it was and I actually had the most horrible day we had our first audition um, you know so, so it was like at my agency probably and then we had a callback so the callback I ha had a terrible head cold like I sounded not like myself at all. I sounded very congested and rough and 10 years older probably. And I got in a car accident on my way to the audition. <laughs> So I got, yeah, I got, I was making a left, it was totally my fault. I was making a left into the health center. I went, was going to get like a decongestant for this audition. I was like, I have a call back. Like I got to like, and so I come in right away and I was making the left and it's three lanes of traffic, but the third lane is people parked. You know, there's mostly parking, but there is, it is a lane, but when people aren't parking there. And so the two lanes stopped for me and I made the left and the third lane did have cars parked, but some guy went to pass the parked cars at full speed and hit me in the, on the right hand side as I was pulling into that parking lot, which is my fault. It's my accident because if you're anytime you're making a left, it's your fault. So Luckily, you know, we didn't call the police or anything. We weren't injured, and but we got all our information, and it was my fault. And my you must have been that. flustered. It was oh, I was a mess, and then I literally went in, got the decongestant, took it, and, and then drove to Westwood to go to the audition. And there was, you know, a, a room of all these prolific actors. You know, it's people I've known, but that work a lot more than I ever had or have. And I was just like, why am I here? Like, this seems like a big waste of time. <laughs> anyway, I left that thinking no chance, like no way. I honestly didn't, I don't think I was thinking about it at all. Cause I was so sure there's no way. And then I was at lunch um, and my agent called and sang this song that had a four leaf clover in it. And I was like, what? She's like, I got some news. And she was so excited. I, I was still like trying to piece it together. And she said I booked it. And I was like, hey. And so, yeah, that's how I got it. And then, yeah, I showed up at work and met. And I, I mean, I met more people as guests on that show than I had. That's what I was telling her. We had amazing guests. Uh, and I think amazing. the the people who were casting had a lot of fun picking their favorite pinup models. As, as guest star. Oh my God. I mean, every kind of person came through that room and we all got to work together. It was wonderful. It was, I mean, Dee Baker. Has I was just going to say that's the first time I ever worked with Dee or met yeah. Dee. Yeah. And we're still friends. And I did not, like, he grew up in where I live now. He came up from here. Like, he came here and worked at Disney here in like the 80s uh, and met his wife here and like and he his whole story i mean and plus his last name's baker so i was like hey cuz hey cousin <laughs> same with troy baker i'm like hey cuz what's up i have a relation <laughs> the baker but, family yeah the baker family voiceover <laughs> actors we should start our own troop <laughs> um yeah it was so fun so fun yeah and I loved, I mean, I loved the director. Like we had, I mean, it changed a lot. The Canada production was very different. It was hard to not be in the room. 
the way that the director directed right. was challenging, you know, but I think I, because we had done it already and we, it was two seasons we did, like, I felt like I knew this. Well, character. and you established who you were. They yeah, had to work they, around you. They did. I mean, thankfully, because I think it would be very different had it, had it been created with that. Like, what I liked about the American, you know, they, they picked us and they let us run with it where the Canadian, you know, he was very much like, he read it, A Home Alone, and he knew how it sounded in his head, and he tried to pull that out of you instead of going, well, wait, let me hear it, well, how, what's Andrea doing with this? And let me see if that works. And, oh, it's not, and instead of being like, oh, it's different, but I could see, it, he would be like, okay, but no, we have to, and then you're like, Oh, I, just, I see. It was okay. so challenging to be like, well, please give me like my 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 take some credence. Like, even if you don't use it in the final cut, you you can pretend that it's got value and then get me to do some more versus letting me know that it's not your voice that you're hearing the way you hear it, which is was not. That's why hire me then. We you should just do all the voices, dude. Like, no, that's not how that works. And be, besides, you've already done a season of it, so you kind of... Well, seasons, it must it? have worked out because you did a four more seasons, right? Well, I think, I think though, uh, Stefan and his wife and David, they loved, we had, they loved us. They were like, we got to keep at least this one, this kooky one. She makes it work. <laughs> Her kookiness, that's what we need. <laughs> hey, Katie, what, what happened then? Because uh, you got replaced halfway through season uh, two, was it? No, no, it was a new season. No, we didn't know it was it was over. Like it was over. We didn't think it was coming back. It, it wasn't. Was it back. was on because the, the channels got sold. Disney yeah. sold ABC or whatever. It, it, and then Cartoon Network. All of a sudden, we hear Cartoon Network bought right. it, and they put it on. And then they saw it was successful and decided to make more shows. From yeah. what I recall. I think that sounds right because it was a few years between season yeah. two and season three. They put, they bought it, and then people liked it, and they said, "Oh, let's make some more." And like, and like this reboot, like they probably just were like, "Well, this is how we're doing it," and we know Katie's not going to work in Canada or non-union. So, or like you said, Katie, they reached out to your agent and were like, "We're doing it this way," and she was like, "Well, that's not how we do it," and that was the end of that. You so, never know. I mean, and I, I wouldn't have known about season seven season seven if like a, a fan hadn't mentioned it to me it might have been you chris i don't remember who told me <laughs> and i did say hey i just i heard about this and i do live in a right to work state i just thought i'd put it out there but i haven't heard they haven't responded yeah i mean no. i'm i'm available to do stuff you know it's not the same it doesn't help you with your pension but it's always fun right. to work and we don't like to give our characters to other people no of course so not. so i i'm also available to work you know non-union if it comes down to it, i'd rather keep my character than have somebody else do it um right. and no offense kathy i've never met you i don't think okay if you're watching this <laughs> okay. what's your name katie katie Oh, Katie. Because we didn't even know. We thought it was you until like we showed up and then we were like, who's that? <laughs> Little different. Girl. But I will say she's lovely. She's a lo lovely person. I'm it's sure like she after, is. That's know, why I said no offense to her. Yeah, it's no offense. And and I don't I mean, I don't think she realized what she was getting until until she was in it and we were all in it talking about what had happened and how different it was. And then we had our own like private conversations and we got to know her privately. She's really nice. Would you consider Totally Spies an anime? I did. I do. Uh, I, but I have heard pushback on that. I mean, I think the style is anime. It's, you know, the characters' drawings are of the style of anime, but... It's definitely yeah. a crossbreed. Uh, it's very unique. I don't think any other shows are done like that mm -mm. and i think that's so, i think when it first came out it was a little like didn't like people like, didn't know what to make of it right this was be maybe before its time uh when it came out but it was uh it has its own style but mm -hmm. i but def i think it falls into both categories i wouldn't say it's not anime so how are you liking your new cat self alex I like it just fine, but that doesn't mean I'm going to let you turn everyone in the world into cat people. 
I didn't really work in anime until after Totally Spies. I didn't do much anime. It sounds like I, you did, no? No, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know what the difference was until it came out. Like, so when we worked on it, I just thought it was a cartoon. I didn't really think much of the style being so different. And then when we saw it, I was like, oh, it's anime. And I was right. like, because we, as I, I told like, her, I we didn't know what it looked her. like until right. we saw it. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I wasn't sure if it would be, if it would work because of the style. Like I was like, oh, but if anybody this. wants me but to come to an anime see. convention, if they want us to show up, oh, well, yeah, well, no yeah. problem. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully we see that uh, Totally Spice reunion at Anime Expo this year. There you go. That would be amazing. <laughs> Well, like, maybe you, you can, can make I, I it, it happen. The first, like, anime style that was really popular. Like, anime was kind of sort of not mainstream, per it's, se. It wasn't mainstream. Time. Now and it is. It was but. always non-union. So to have a union job at the time, it wouldn't yeah. even occur to us that it would be anime. And right. the fact that it was originally in English, because anime normally comes from someplace else and yeah. is dubbed in English. Yes. So this wasn't like that. Uh, do you, any of you have any memorable moments you guys had in the booth while recording your sessions for Totally Spies? I, I, I feel like the, like we had those moments where we had to do the, like, the, like the whooping sounds together. Like it was almost like we turned into like a girls group. Like, it, like <laughs> moments like that. It looks so random, but so fun. Like, you know, you do the low one, I'll do like, we're going to, and we're going to sink it like we're jumping up the slide, or like, yeah. like, you're, and you're just like vocalizing. I always together. use when I'm coaching, just to sort of weed out the people who can do animation or not, I say, okay, look, you have to use your imagination. Let's say someone says to you all of a sudden, you're hanging by your toe upside down from a helicopter and you're applying lipstick and calling to somebody at an airplane that's zipping by. Can you imagine that? <laughs> that's what it's like. <laughs> and that was probably directly from one of our episodes. <laughs> probably. That sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> Something like it. The lipstick part had me. <laughs> <laughs> at least for Clover. <laughs> exactly, please. <laughs> you guys were the Charlie's Angels at the time of our childhoods. We That's were. What I used to explain. I Charlie's to explain Angels that. meets Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah, I used, to, I used to say it was actually Charlie's Angels meets Powerpuff Girls. We're like oh. in the between. Or, like or grown up Powerpuff Girls that are not yet Charlie's Angels. <laughs> or, or Clueless. Or what is yeah, totally. Oh gosh, it was so fun. Did you guys have fun uh, doing all the recording sessions for uh, when uh, you guys, your characters got from their normal lives or whatever they were and got sucked in into Whoop? I'm talking about those vocalizations like we and we would I mean I as as the seasons went on you know you're trying to do something different every time like oh my gosh it got really funny. <laughs> So what did you like about playing your characters? You know what I loved about Clover right away is like she's, um, we're very similar. Like I, at our core, like we love boys and we do dumb things because of boys. And we are wear our heart on our sleeves and we're totally loyal to our friends, like to a fault. And all that stuff like resonates with me. Like 100% I'm like, I can, I can completely put myself in this circumstance and this, and it was just me. Like it was just me pretending, you know, being younger and maybe more enthusiastic about things. But like in general, it's just, she's, she and I are very much very similar. Um, I, it was not a lot of a stretch of performance. I just could really, um, and do the imagination work of putting myself there and what came out was was what came out and it was her and she was awesome i, I think i think we all got probably cast because they're like our characters alex was as close to me as anybody else i've ever played too so maybe she's a little bit more down to earth but definitely boy crazy but just not not like these guys they all everybody had their own personalities and that did make it easy it wasn't hard we weren't putting on voices 
Do yeah. you think that your uh, resemblance to your personality for the characters had to do with uh, the freedom of having to voice the characters in the way that you wanted? As opposed to, like what you said earlier, as opposed to dubbing, where somebody would tell you, oh, it should sound like this? You feel like you're collaborating and your input is valuable, like Andrea was saying before. When somebody doesn't want your input, it's kind of takes a little spark away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because then it then the question becomes, why did you hire me? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, what's the purpose? I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not just a. Uh, you know, like like a mannequin. A parrot. Like I'm. I'm not Automated. just a parrot yeah. that parrots back what you. You know, like you're not. You're just. You're disregarding like my artistic choices by and i think out. you know i think it's kind of shallow because you know as coaches we're always telling people and i imagine you tell them the exact same thing you know we have to put on the costume of the character but it's about acting jess always says voice acting little v big a there's you know you've got to yes. put your if you don't have true emotions your character doesn't feel real so if a lot of people come into voice acting thinking, well, I can do funny voices and I can sound like this. And OK, I mean, I get women coming to me for coaching because their natural voice sounds really young and they talk like this. And I say, OK, and I give them copy, but they're IT specialists and they right. have no idea how to uh, pretend like they're kids. They forgot right. what it was like to be a little kid. So there's there's acting. So what I'm trying to say is. There are people who think that voice acting is just about voices or and it's shallow because it's more about the personality you bring to the character. If you have a director who just wants to hear a certain read and doesn't let it come from you organically, it won't be as profound a performance, I don't yeah. think. For Totally Spies, uh, was there anything after, between, after season six and the movie that you saw a change in the show and just production or anything like that to i mean the big shift was from season two to three four five six and the movie the three four five six and the movie were done by the same group so it was done the same way um same director yeah and, probably and a few it, cast changes here and there yeah and and yeah and it it was the well even the cast that changed like they i mean katie stayed the same the other katie was there you know so once it changed for season three it it stayed the same i don't know jerry might have changed again like again we didn't record together we we got to record jen and and, and i in la in a booth with katie in a booth in toronto with the director and we would do that those sessions like that but jerry was never there with us whoever played jerry I don't remember him after Jess. <laughs> Poor guy. But I never met him. I not, never met not him. We memorable. never worked together. He was never in the session. So I mean, I heard, I've heard his voice. I've heard, seen some of the episodes and heard his voice. And but yeah, I didn't get to experience him in person um, or any of the guest stars. We never, you know, we just did our lines together over a couple of, you know, a couple of sessions for per episode. Like we do a session and then we do a pickup session usually. And for every episode and that was it are there any tips or advices you can give to you, any voice act, future voice actors that are currently watching this and like katie was saying it's acting so it's yes it's a type of acting but it's acting so that craft is needs to be honed and you you can't create and be free to create in a way that will get you work if you're doing it for money like if the minute I need a job, I will not get a job. Like you have to really have your life set up so that you're safe, content, comfortable, and you can then do your best performance, just fueling and feeding the character and not your personal needs in any way. Like it's really, I mean, you're trying to bring, you know, I love what Miser is like illuminating the human condition. That's what it is. It's like, we're putting a flashlight on a moment in time and someone's experience that if you do it authentically, you will have these people that remember it forever and they are thankful for it and stuff. If you do it authentically, acting the performance of and bringing this character to life that's real and people can relate to, 
that is what it is. So work on that, working on setting up yourself to be comfortable and safe and comfortable and confident and not needing anything. And then never give up. If it's, if you love it, it's, it's hard. It's so hard to get no's so many times. Like, you know, you have to, I always am like rejection and I, or it's like water on a duck. Like if I didn't have, when someone wants me, I'm you always can't like, even I, think of it as rejection. It's not rejection. Well, it, it's, 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 it's more gift. like it's a gift. It's when you get the job, it's exciting. The rest of it doesn't matter. Just the normal process. You have to be okay with that being very normal for someone to be like, great, thanks, and never hear from them. Like that's your normal. And and like I when I coached, I was telling someone, I'm like, oh, so you're get you're reading for the same casting director again. That's a that's a win. Like if you read for someone, you get the job, but you are reading again for that person they like you they're not wasting their time with someone that didn't think you have something to offer so just fuel all the anything that helps you be confident and secure so all that stuff doesn't affect your your trajectory and then never stop like and if you love it you will that's what it takes it's like perseverance consistency over time and finding like the self-love and self-worth to let all the anyone that's trying to say no to not even it won't it's not going to stop you maybe our experience being cast in totally spies is evidence that bringing your own personality to a job if somebody likes it don't take it like you're not liked because right. you don't get a job but if they like your personality you know you you can bring yourself and if it works out it works out. I'm, I'm, I feel very sad for the people who say, I want to move to LA. I've had people tell me this, move to LA. I don't care what it takes. I'll live in my car till I get it. You can book a job. It's not going to pay your bills or right. enough to live on. Right. I mean, it takes a lot of voiceover work to make a living. Yes. And for my last question, normally I ask uh, if the show were to come back, but we know that the show is coming back. Hire us! Hire us! We're here! We want to do it! I'm definitely interested. I'm definitely we have interested. our own studios! We're we free! Do. Yeah, COVID has changed everything. We're very mobile and yeah. You're ready, set to go. Yep. You send me be. the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, though, uh, can you provide us with the lovely voice of Clover and Alex? Oh, my gosh, I did not prepare. And I usually have to stand up to do Clover because she has this way of standing. Oh, my gosh, it's been so much fun. I loved it, you guys. Thank this you. This was totally awesome. Totally Thanks so awesome. much for having us. Come on. Thank oh, my gosh, so Clover, could I borrow that sweater? That looks No, good. this is my favorite. Are you kidding me right now? Please. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. That was perfect. I had to do the hip, I had to do the hip thing when I first been like even to her. And I believe that's the official poster pose for her on. <laughs> so funny. Uh, what a gift to see you, Katie. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciated this. Thanks like, for coming. Like, I didn't want to do this by myself. Thanks, Crystal. Yeah. You're welcome. Definitely. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. But the fun is not over yet. Head on over to our website so you can find out how you can win an awesome autograph from Andrea Baker, the voice of Clover. All you have to do is check out the video description box below, and you'll find the link to our website, and it'll take you directly where you need to go in order for you to find out how to win an autograph from Andrea Baker. With that being said, I am currently recording this at Animal Los Angeles here in Long Beach, California. I will be bringing you more content and interviews from this convention. I'll leave you guys with these awesome videos and interviews I know you love. I'll see you guys next time.